Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Guy Stuff. Today I'm doing a really tasty treat. This is going to be for fans of pasta and fans of buffalo chicken wings. We're going to do a buffalo chicken lasagna. Super easy. We're going to do this with the exception of boiling the pasta all on the grill, because you know I'm a grill guy. But you can do this in your oven, you can do most of this on your stove top. That's really not the important part. Now I've got two rather small whole chickens here. These are just small enough where they fit on my Weber kettle. I'm going to do these beer can style, but you know what? You can do your chicken just about any way you like. The only thing I'm going to suggest is that you make it as neutral as possible. All right, now normally when I do a beer can chicken, and you can check out my video on doing that, I'll go through all that kind of step. I'm not going to show you all the details of that, of that but you know what? There isn't that much to this. Basically, you're just steaming the chicken from the inside. It's a very tender, great neutral way of doing it. Plus, for this recipe, we're going to be shredding the chicken, and beer can or rotisserie works out beautifully for that. I'm not putting anything on the chicken, okay? Do it neutral. You can use chicken tenders or chicken breasts and just bake them if you want to. Just don't put anything on it because all the flavor for this recipe is going to come from the sauce. So we just want a real neutral, neutral chicken. I'm not even going to add smoke out there. I'm just going to be basically steaming these. And if you're going to do it beer can style, it doesn't really matter what you use for the liquid. I happen to have a couple cans of hard cider here, so I'm going to use that. But you can use water, you can use juice, you can use any beer. That really doesn't lend too much flavor to the recipe. It's just the volume of liquid steaming the chicken from the inside. The only important part when you do a beer can is that you empty a lot of the liquid out of the can. You can't use a full can because there isn't enough heat to generate steam. You're just going to slow boil it and it doesn't work. So use about a third of a can worth of liquid. And then you just shove it up the butt. Besides the chicken, we have a couple packs of cream cheese. A whole white onion, we're going to use a couple cloves worth of garlic. You can use fresh or these uh, refrigerated minced cans work really well. We're going to use about a half a stick of butter. Of course, we've got a big pack of lasagna. And like I said, I'm going to do this on the stove. Not real convenient to be boiling pasta on the grill. I have a couple bottles of Frank's Red Hot Wing Sauce. Buffalo flavor. All right, it's, it's really beautiful. It's pretty much the sauce to use in a lot of restaurants. And then, if you're a traditional Buffalo Wings fan, you're going to want chunky blue cheese. And I certainly love it. Uh, my wife loves it. She could just drink this out of the bottle, I think. For those of you that don't like blue cheese, you want ranch, you can certainly substitute that. My only suggestion with that is use a real ranch dressing, not a fat-free. You want it as thick as possible, especially for this recipe. And that is going to do it. We're going to make up a simple sauce with some of these ingredients all on the grill in just a regular old pot. Then we're going to, well, first I'm going to, first I'm going to do our chicken. We're going to get the chicken cooked. That's not going to take too long, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Then we're going to make our sauce, and then we're going to do the lasagna on the grill in a pan. Let's get started. Okay, I'm starting with a full chimney of coals. They're just about ready. I'm going to put them on a little bit early because we are doing this for a few hours. I'm not smoking these. So these are just going to go straight in. And yes, I need a new chimney. Mine just broke. All the coals go on one side. Now I'm going to put the grate on here. I got my chickens ready. We're going to do them for about one hour. And then flip them around. We're going to start them rest side towards the heat. Now the only thing important here is you want them to be able to stand up so you got to put them far enough in so the lid doesn't knock them over. Make sure it's steady on the can because you don't want this tipping over. And a little tip with the liquid, whatever you use, preheat it. I just poured it out into a glass, both cans, or both half cans I should say, microwaved it for a couple minutes. You don't need it boiling, but ooh, it's getting hot. But uh, otherwise, you eat up some grill time here where it starts to heat up. It can be a little tricky getting these guys to stand up right. It's okay if you want to lean it up against each other too. 
That's what I'm going to do because they kind of want to tip. All right, there we go. Should be enough room for the lid. Let's see. There we go. Barely. They're just touching the tip here. Now, you want to do these. If you didn't watch my other video, I'm going to do these about 300 degrees. You need the temp high enough where it's going to really generate some steam out of those cans. Actually, I'm going to turn my vents 90 degrees so they're not right over the chicken. You don't want that steam just immediately escaping. You want it to circulate a little bit. So if you don't really know your grill, use a thermometer to get in there and get it right about 300 degrees. I happen to know my vent combinations and how much charcoal I'm using so that'll be dialed in now I'm gonna come back in an hour and we'll just flip those right flip them around Ooh, is it smelling good these have been going about an hour and a quarter let's take a look Ooh, hot handle oh beautiful nice golden brown going got some of the fat rendering off oh man it smells like Thanksgiving it really does it's got that delicious juicy turkey smell even though it's chicken See the juice is dripping down there. Of course, some of that's going to be steamed too. Absolutely tender, I guarantee it. All right, now I'm just going to flip these guys around, put the camera down because it takes two hands, and we're going to go about another hour. I'm going to play it by ear because I don't have any brine. There's no seasoning. There's nothing on these. So normally when I would do it, it's about a two and a half hour process, but these might not take as long because I don't have as much moisture in the chicken itself and it's just going. I just want it cooked and nice and tender and that's it. We're going to get all the flavor in the next step. Now the coals should last until we're done with the chicken. I'm going to have to throw on a little bit more just to bake the lasagna. Alright, next step. Okay, the chicken's been going two hours. It's almost done. So now we can start prep of the rest of the stuff. I've got the water coming up to temp to cook the pasta and now we're going to start making our sauce. The first step is... You ready for chicken, Chloe? Yeah. We're going to dice an onion. And now we're going to take half a stick of butter, melt it in a pan, and we're going to put in a couple cloves worth of garlic and the onion. Reduce it down. All right, medium heat. Onions go in first. They always take longer than garlic. You never want to do garlic more than a minute or two. You just want it to sweat, caramelize a little bit, but it burns really quickly. So we put the garlic in. When we're down to the last minute or two of the onions, we want to get these real translucent and soft. These are in here for flavor, not texture, so we do want them to break down. Just do it over medium heat. shouldn't take more than five or six minutes, and then we'll be ready for the garlic. Meanwhile, our water is at a boil and I've salted it. Now we're ready for the pasta. Just follow the instructions on the box for whatever brand you're using. Mine calls for a reboil and then 10 to 12 minute al dente time. I'm going to go a little bit on the short side, so I'll hit it at 10 minutes because we are rebaking this and it's going to be in a lot of sauce. So we don't need it absolutely perfect out of the water. So we're just going to let this reboil. I'm going to set the timer. And then we're going to pull it off and get it out of the water right away. Okay, our onions have softened and they're starting to caramelize. I'm going to go ahead and put in some garlic now. This is somewhat to taste, but I do recommend at least a little bit. Keep that stirring. Just let it go for a couple minutes. And then we'll be ready to stop this part cooking at least. All right, this is now softened and reduced nicely. Just make sure nothing ever sticks. If you start to burn garlic, it ruins whatever it's in because that's all you taste. Very, very potent when you burn it. Now we're going to put in the two bottles of the Frank's wing sauce. Put them all in here. This is what kills the cooking real quick. It's going to be a lot of liquid, which is exactly what we want. There's one. We got five minutes left on the pasta. 
As soon as that's done, I'm gonna pull it off and we're gonna go out and get the chicken, pull it, and it's gonna go into the sauce. And we'll just let this heat up slowly on the medium heat. It won't get near a boil or anything, but we're just giving it a head start. And like I said, you can do this in the oven if you want to, but I'm gonna do it on the grill. Works very well either way. All right, we're just about to pull the pasta, and this sauce is warmed up a bit. Now we're gonna put in our softened cream cheese. Uh, need a knife. Aha, without cutting my hands. Need a bigger kitchen. Now, if you still have this cold, I suggest you cube it. But if it's softened like this, it'll melt right in pretty quickly. I'll get the last bits out of there in a minute. Now we just want to fold this in and mix it in as part of the sauce. Got our pasta done. I'm going to set this aside and just let it cool down. Turn the heat down a little bit on this. Don't really want it sitting here boiling. This will incorporate the cream cheese in just a few minutes. As soon as that is all smooth, it will be ready. And it will be ready by the time we get done with the next step which is pulling the chicken off the grill and shredding it. And again, if you want to do chicken tenders or breasts, you can do that and just shred it. You want to take the skin off whatever you're working with. And we're going to add it right into this big pot. And again, if you want to cut everything in half so you don't have to use these huge pots and everything, that's perfectly fine too. I'm doing a very large family size because I love leftovers. Let's go yes, get Let's go get the chicken. All right. Time to pull our chicken. Oh, that looks good. That looks delicious. Golden brown, crispy, bubbling, still juicy. I've got a, a large baking dish here. It's about the largest I can fit on here where it's not taking up the whole grill. I'm just going to carry these in on it. I'm going to shred it. Everything is going to go back into here. This is where we're going to layer the lasagna. Be real careful taking these guys off. I'm going to get this one here because he was tipping earlier. Because there's still going to be some liquid in the cans, most likely. And you just don't want to burn yourself. It's okay if they flop over. We're going to take the skins off them and everything. Inside, debone it. Shred it. We're just after the tender chicken meat. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this. All right, chicken's in. We're going to leave it set for about 10 minutes, let it cool down, let the juices reincorporate, and then it'll be cold enough where we can skin it, pull the chicken off, and by that time, our sauce will be done. Now, if you've done it right, everything should just completely peel apart. It's hot. You've got to watch it, but, I mean, just incredibly tender and juicy great for pulling. You're going to have a little bit more probably than you'll need for this. Skin just comes right off. Careful taking out the cans. I dumped out the excess liquid and then dumped it into the sink. These cans are piping hot because they are aluminum. Don't worry about getting them out. Just take off the big chunks of chicken as it's cooling. Take the skin off to help it. And then what I do is I transfer the meat over here, debone it, de-skin it, and then I'm going to collect all the meat in a bowl. Okay, got enough shredded. What you're looking for is at least four cups worth. I've used about three quarters of these two chickens. You can take whatever meat you like best. I'm a dark meat fan, so I took that 
first and then filled in the rest with the breasts and the tenders. I'll tell you what, no matter what you do with this chicken, this is the healthiest way you can do chicken and it makes it one of the healthiest types of meats out there possible. There's nothing on it. I mean nothing. No salt, no pepper, no seasonings. It is just pull apart, juicy, very flavorful, just delicious. Absolutely perfect all the way through. And every bit of meat. I mean, this is how you can do rotisserie at home. You don't have to go to the grocery store and pay 10 bucks for one of these to be done rotisserie style. I got these in a two pack at Walmart. I think I paid nine bucks for the both of them. So there you go. Anyway, now we're going to take our chicken and put it into our sauce. Got our sauce just on simmer here. Once it comes up to a boil, you just kick it down. You just want to keep it warm. Just so nothing's burning on the bottom. That's the only point. So in goes our chicken. Just mix it all in there. And we're just going to get it coated. Just fold it in. It's going to make a nice, fairly thick mixture. Now what we're going to do is take that same pan that we have the chickens in, I'm going to pull them out, just put them on my cutting board, and we're going to start layering our lasagna. It's probably only going to be enough room in there for two layers of this filling. This is our filling. And we're going to alternate layers of filling. Oop, missed a bone there. That wouldn't have been good to bite down on. We're going to alternate filling, chunky blue cheese, and lasagna noodles. So let's build that sucker up. Okay, first in, just a real light coat of the filling. We just want to coat the bottom of the pan so the noodles aren't stuck right on it, that's all. More juice the better here, not so much the chicken. Just a thin coat. We're going to have plenty of juices running down while it's cooking. All right, now the base layer of noodles. They've been cooling so they're a little sticky. Just try not to rip any. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. Lasagna noodles are very hearty. You can layer them any way you want. You just want even coverage. It's okay if you have to cut some. I'll probably do one horizontal here at the end, I see. Doesn't have to be perfect, you just want a nice even layer. So I'm going to finish this up here. Well, I guess I'll let you guys see it. Not that big of a deal. I'll fill in the end here. Come on, noodles. Because I was filming and prepping stuff, I was a little off sync here. So I'm going to tear this at the end just because I don't want it wrapping up the side of the pan. Keep that aside. All right, now we're going to do one normal layer of filling. Again, nice and even, not too thick. You're pretty much going to be using half of what you have here for this layer. So we're going to do one more. There we go. Alright, next we're going to layer in one bottle of the chunky blue cheese. You just kind of drizzle this. You just want it nice and even also. This is why I said don't worry about that bottom layer. Because there's going to be plenty of liquid in here while it's baking. Alright, now one more layer of noodles. Come on, noodles. It's like a tangled mess of cables. A little 
little bit off the end, get this last one in here. I'm going to put this guy in the middle. There we go. All right, last layer of filling. Again, nice and even. Almost there, almost there. Last bottle of blue cheese. Chunkier the better in my opinion. One more layer of noodles. Can never have enough layers of noodles. some left over but that's okay noodles are cheap I think that box cost like two bucks maybe 250 two more all right now we're gonna top this off with mozzarella. If you want to use a different cheese, that's fine too. You just want to coat it with a nice, thick, even coat. This is going to help all the steam stay in and of course give a really beautiful topping to the lasagna. You want a nice, even coat all the way around. There we go. That looks absolutely beautiful. All right, now this goes back on the grill as hot as it'll go for at least a half an hour. We'll check up on it after the half hour mark. Half an hour in time to just check in on things here. It really smells good. I can smell the onions and the garlic. It's coming along. Cheese is just starting to melt. Still got a ways to go. Got some boiling going on. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around because I'm, I'm about half and half on the grill here, direct and indirect. There's no coals directly underneath it, but they're pretty close to the edge here. So I'm just going to spin this around, get some more even heat. Mmm, that is smelling good. And there we go. I'm going to finish it off here, probably another 20, 30 minutes total, and I've got it over what's left of the coals, just to eke out as much heat as I can from it. All right, I'm going to get the lid on before I lose too much of it here, and almost done. Oh man, this whole back porch just smells so good. Let's take a look here. Oh yeah, that is ready. All right, the wife is still at the gym. She's going to be home real soon. I can see the lasagna noodles around there just crisped up. Cheese looks almost completely melted, 95% or so. Perfect there. The rest, I'm sure, will just be melting your mouth good. Still got the juices boiling away. All right, I'm going to keep this on just to keep it warm. Coals are just about done. That worked out. I did put another big handful on when the chicken was done in between the time I took the chicken off and put that on. So let's plate it up. And there we go. It's a little uh, difficult getting out straight out of the pan off the grill. My wife just got home, so I just plated it up. But it is awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.